You're listening to Random Fit with hosts Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, winner of a Gold Markham Award for Digital Media. So, Anthony, that, that kind of brings me into um, your the cortex. Now, can you tell us a little bit, what is the cortex? What was your motivation behind the cortex? How long has it been out there? And just kind of give us a little bit of a background so then we can dive deeper into that. Because I think your product is really something can help people move better, perform better. They feel better pretty much immediately. But for those of, of um, our listeners that don't know anything about it, can you kind of give us some background? Uh, sure, I'd love to. Uh, it has been around now for about 13 years, probably. Um, we're on generation two since 2016, but it's a reactive platform. It's the only thing out there that'll tilt, slide, and rotate at the same time. Comes with a hand rail uh, for anybody that's going to stand on it. But the, the driving principle behind it is in, uh, in introducing movement variability to the user. Um, no matter, and it's more of an environment. So um, you know, originally when it when it came out, when people first saw it, they immediately went to it's a balanced product. It's a Bosu on steroids. Um, and no knock on the Bosu whatsoever. It's just an apples to oranges comparison. We often say it because it's a flat firm platform that sits on three ball transfers that allow it to move. Um, and because it's like a three legged stool, using the stool metaphor again, um, it's there's always contact with with the ball transfer. So it's a very smooth. Um, but it's a com it's a, almost an infinite number of combinations of movement because as it tilts and then slides and it can rotate all at the same time. So the idea behind it was how, how do we how do I introduce these variable stressors to the body regardless of what position the person's in? Um, originally, the idea came to me originally as as if I were standing on it. And how can I get my hips and knees and, and midfoot and rear foot to do all these different things that I can't really do on the ground? I can try to from the top down. But if I do it on something that provides that from the bottom up, it's a completely different experience. And, and again, it's it's also most of the time it's going to be novel and new to the nervous system. So it allows us to often access, especially with the mobility access or mobility applications, it often allows us to access ranges of motion or positions that initially the, the nervous system would be apprehensive about. But because it's completely new. And, and, it, and the brain doesn't recognize it as a threat or limitation that we can access some of these ranges of motion, and then uh, we can hit a lot of different vectors on the tissue, which is good for both the motor system, right? Because we, come, we, we start continually creating problems for it to solve, right? And then exposing the tissue to a lot more uh, positive stress. So both the, the joints aren't continually loaded in the same, using the sort of the same uh, osteokinematics consistently or and orthokinematics consistently. And um, we're also not stressing the tissue the same all the time because there's all this sort of built-in variability around the product and, and the environment. So, so Wendy, what um, to put that in in one statement, you got to find out where the closest facility is in Atlanta, and you just got to get on it. And I, that's what I tell everybody when it, you know, I can't, I can't explain the cortex as well as you can, uh, Anthony, as much work as I've done with that. But the best way to go about it, Wendy, is just to find one and get on one and then and then try it out because because of all those all those parts of it and Anthony I think it's best explained it's like you're just changing the environment that you're on you go from the solid surface and and I think when you first showed it to me you I think the way you were explaining it was you were in a squat rack and you were you were doing your exercise and then the the thought came what else can I do while I'm standing what else can I do to to turn this body on and and do more with the body and you just change the environment um, but a little story and I, I don't remember Anthony when you first introduced me to the cortex but and here I here I am I thought we were friends right and, <laughs> and, and you said to me hey um, I have I have this thing I want to show you but you have to sign this uh, non-disclosure. <laughs> I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> that that um, was the early, early days. <laughs> that was the early because I want I want to show you this thing, and and it, this was when the cortex was blue. That first prototype. Yep, it was just a prototype. Yeah. That was a prototype, and <clears throat> and there was no railing, and I think you had to put it in the corner so you can actually use the corners, the the walls, the two walls. You can put your hands on it. And then get on there and i just remember thinking 
this thing is nuts. I mean, you know, considering that never been on anything like that before, but since then, Wendy, and I've, and I've talked to you about this before and that the last four or five places that I've worked in, I've had the Cortex as one of the pieces of equipment. And, and I think Anthony's just, you know, you're just touching the tip of the iceberg when you talk about the application, because I've worked in a physical therapy clinic for a couple of years and I had the Cortex, Cortex then. I was in a, I was at a golf course working in their, in their fitness facility and I had it there. I have four of them in my facility now. Um, and then I, when I was teaching, um, I had one on site. So just from the standpoint that you can talk post rehab or you can apply post rehab techniques, uh, mobility techniques, uh, conditioning, a lot of people don't realize how hard of a workout that you can get from using that piece of equipment, all because of the challenges that it offers the body. Again, when you talk about moving in all three of those dimensions at the same time, it's it's a stimulus that the body's not going to experience on anything else. And I, I, I don't want to overhype it, but it I think at the same time, it goes underrepresented as far as the capacity of well, the different ways that you can improve movement in the body if you apply it correctly. Again, for whom, for what and when. Yeah, yeah. it all comes in together. So Anthony, I saw um, too looking on the site that now you guys just and I don't know I say just I don't know how long the just released part of the there's now a cortex sit where you can you know to help people. So how does that work? I mean, is it something because when you look at it, it would look almost like a Dyna disc and you're sitting there and I know it's completely not. So how would you explain that to someone that's asking questions about it? Well, it's, it's based on the similar, similar principle, which is uh, the, that th the three ball transfers. And instead of it being flat, it's a little bit convex. So it's almost a little bit dome on shape and it doesn't it doesn't squish down like a dining disc. So, I mean, that's that's a fair assumption that, that we get often. And people are like, well, why can't I just sit on a dining disc? And it is designed for chairs um, primarily, although there, there are certainly movements that you can do with it on the floor. And we have we have PE classes and things like that are using it. But again, the, the driving principle behind it is variability. And in this case, it's micro movements or micro variability when a person's sitting because we get comfortable in these chairs. Right. And and as we get comfortable, and we sit down in those chairs. There's very little energy expenditure. And because there's very little energy expenditure, we stay in that same posture for prolonged periods of time. But if we're giving if we're on something that's completely reactive, so meaning that if I look out the window like that, there's going to be a, a change in the position of my center of gravity, which is going to be reflected in, in the cortex sit. And I'm just constantly kind of working on that little intermittent um, balance process. So, and because of the convexity, it doesn't squish down, it's kind of gently spreads the ischial tuberosities, which eccentrically loads the pelvic floor, keeps pressure off the cossacks, and uh, provides feedback to the perineum underneath. So there's a little pelvic floor, there's a little low back applications in that sense. But, and, and the fact that I'm sort of have to be aware, we think it improves engagement when you're working on the computer and that kind of stuff, right? Because yeah. I've got all these little kind of micro movements going on underneath. And, and, and that's, that's actually beneficial metabolically, but obviously there's there's certain musculoskeletal things that uh, that we that if we can again dissipate that stress without it accumulating in any one position with physiological creep, that's going to happen within 20 minutes. If I'm just sitting slouched in this chair for all that time, I can avoid that. But it's a firm surface, so people will take it on and off their chair periodically throughout the day. It's not really meant to be like a, a cushion that you sit on all day because your butt's going to get tired from it. This needs to be implemented into certain classes, I think, for kids. Yeah. You know, like there needs to be like the science class where they all go there. So it's not all day, but when they get into that one hour, they have to pay attention or something. We're actually in a pilot program in Colorado with with schools for for uh, for different reasons. But and one of them, believe it or not, this is I found this extremely interesting was because they're putting so much. You know, with kids now, there's so much going on in the social emotional aspect of things. Is that uh, having these, especially these younger kids, kind of elementary kids, uh, they have like a let's call it, I don't want to call it a timeout area, but it's an area where the kids can go over and, and sort of regain their composure. And one of the things that they're doing is letting the kids on the cortex sit because it helps them kind of get recentered and focused instead of like being out here with all the things that they're uh, um, stressed about or worried about. They have to, they have to get a little bit internal, which is, a, which calms them. And um, there's probably a lesson for us adults in that too. Right? I love everything about that, by the way. Yeah.